Germany initiated a fierce counter-offensive on the Western Front in an attempt to split Allied lines. Known as the Battle of the Bulge, the fighting rampaged for five weeks. In what could only be described as pure carnage, some 19,000 Americans were killed while countless tens of thousands were wounded, captured or missing in action. Engulfed by death, soldiers in the trenches frantically wanted to receive a lifeline in the form of mail from their loved ones back home. However, the turmoil of the bloodshed choked the army's capacity to deliver it. In January 1945, 26-year-old Major, later Lieutenant Colonel, Charity Adams, who took the surname early upon her marriage in 1949, was making history as the first African-American commanding officer in the Women's Army Corps to be deployed to a theater of war. Approximately one month later, Adams was on a field in Birmingham, England, in charge of a battalion that would soon number 855 women, many of whom were anxious and fatigued. They endured a potentially deadly 11-day journey by sea from the United States. Their ship, the Ile de France, survived close encounters with Nazi U-boats and arrived in Glasgow, Scotland, on 14 February, where a German B-1 rocket exploded near the dock, causing the women to run for cover. The war was at its bloodiest point and mail was vital for morale, but delivering it had become a colossal demand. In order to boost morale, the newly minted all-black, all-female 6 8 Central Postal Directory Battalion, had the arduous task of sorting and sending millions of pieces of backlogged mail. It was bitterly cold when they arrived. The women wore long underwear and coats in the freezing buildings in which they worked. Rats hunted for packages of spoiled cakes and cookies. And what little sleep they got could be interrupted by air raids. Despite a can-do attitude, Adams believed that she and her troops had been set up for failure. Before the formation of the 6 8 it was inconceivable that a unit of black women could be posted overseas and trusted with such an enormous task. The 6 8 was a pass-fail test to rate the value black women brought to the military. Years of constant pressure from civil rights activists, including the First Lady, Eleanor Roosevelt, had convinced the War Department to give black women a chance. However, those who staunchly fought against the inclusion of black women expected to be validated by the 6 8s a failure. The eyes of the public would be upon us, waiting for one slip in our conduct or performance, Major Adams recalled in her memoir. Major Adams knew that simply getting the job done wouldn't be enough. The 6 8 would need to not only pass the test but also, as Adams wrote, prove to be the best Women's Army Corp unit ever sent into a foreign theater. Unit members were organized into three separate eight-hour shifts. This allowed work to continue around the clock, seven days a week. They tracked service members by maintaining approximately 7 million information cards which included serial numbers to distinguish different people with the same name. The 6 8 examined inadequately addressed mail for clues to determine the intended recipient, and they had the somber duty of returning mail addressed to service members who had died. The women of the 6 8 were the subject of curiosity from the local citizens of Birmingham, who came to watch them work. Major Adams received greetings from a several civilian and U.S. and British military officials. The women were welcome in British public spaces and were sometimes invited into private homes for tea. None of the housing facilities were very warm during the winter. Quarters, the mess hall, and military recreational facilities were segregated by race and gender. Although male African-American soldiers, along with white servicemen and women, had been allowed in a local club for enlisted American military personnel run by the American Red Cross, neither this club nor the American Red Cross hotels in London welcomed the African-American WAC in response, Major Adams led the unit in a boycott of the alternative segregated facilities which the Red Cross offered. The women of the 6 8 ran their own mess hall, their own hair salon, their own refreshment bar, and other recreational facilities. They experienced food rationing with daily portions of spam. In her history of the Women's Army Corps, Maddie E. Treadwell wrote, the unit was congratulated by the theater on its, exceptionally fine, special services program, military courtesies and grooming and appearance of members and the maintenance of quarters. On the other hand, Treadwell and other writers refer to debates over the unit's efficiency, because some inspectors were not content with the level of production. Personal prejudices may have been a factor in some inspectors' attitudes. Earlier in her military career, unit commander Major Charity Adams had been reprimanded by a colonel for race mixing after accepting an invitation to a white officer's club. When a male general came to inspect the unit, Major Adams prevented him from viewing the women's private rooms while some of them were sleeping. After headquarters and off-duty personnel of the unit were assembled in a formation, the general chastised Major Adams for not having all her troops present. 
Major Adams tried to explain that the women worked three different ships and that she followed the orders she was given. The hard-nosed general cut her off and threatened to send a white first lieutenant to show her how to command the unit. Major Adams famously replied, over my dead body, sir. This nearly earned her a court-martial. Nonetheless, the general was dissuaded from carrying out the threat. By the time the same general visited the unit in France, his attitude had changed and he appreciated the six triple eights accomplishments. The women were the subject of some hostility and rumors impugning their character spread by both white and black male soldiers who resented black women being allowed in the army. Despite this treatment, the 6 triple eight Central Postal Directory Battalion produced staggering results in Birmingham. With the new tracking system they created, the women processed an average of 65,000 pieces of mail per shift and cleared the six-month backlog of mail in three months. The women adhered to the motto of, no mail, low morale, providing essential support for the U.S. military in the European theater by linking service members to their loved ones back home. They achieved unbelievable success and efficiency in solving the military's postal problems. With the immense backlog in Birmingham gone, the 6 triple eight Central Postal Directory Battalion sailed to France on 9 June 1945. They arrived in Le Havre, where they were shocked to find a city left in ruins by the Nazis, and traveled by train to Rouen, where they were invited to participate in a victory parade past the spot where Joan of Arc had been executed. The women were cheered and respected by the newly liberated French. The unit was quartered in the Caserne Talendier, an old French barracks within a walled compound. The arrival of a significant number of American women on the continent attracted the attention of both white and black U.S. servicemen, who, suddenly found that they had business in Rouen. Enhanced security efforts were required to keep unauthorized personnel out of the compound. After the unit's WAC military police were denied firearms, they trained in jiu-jitsu, a martial arts form which proved effective in keeping out unwanted visitors. The women of the 6 triple eight now worked with French civilians and German POW they tackled another backlog of undelivered mail dating back as far as two to three years which again would take an estimated six months to process. On 8 July 1945, PFC Mary J. Barlow and PFC Mary H. Bankston were killed in a jeep accident, while Sergeant Dolores M. Brown died on 13 July from injuries resulting from the accident. The War Department did not provide funds for funerals. The women of the 6 triple eight pooled their resources to honor their fallen members. First Lieutenant Dorothy Scott found three unit members who had experience with mortuary work to take care of the bodies. Unit members paid for caskets. Memorial services were organized and held for the deceased, and Major Adams wrote to inform their families in the United States of their fate. Sergeant Brown, PFC Barlow, and PFC Bankston were buried with honors in the Normandy American Cemetery at colville sur mer with the end of World War II, the strength of the 6 triple eight Central Postal Directory Battalion was reduced by nearly 300 personnel, with over 200 more women eligible for discharge in January 1946. The morale of the battalion suffered as the workload fluctuated and there were fewer women available to process holiday mail, while working in unheated premises. In Paris, the 6 triple eight also faced a new challenge, the theft of small packages and items. The women were forced to search the local civilians they worked with in order to recover stolen items. In February 1946, the remainder of the unit returned to the United States and was disbanded at Fort Dix, New Jersey, without ceremony. There were no parades, no public appreciation, and no official recognition of their accomplishments. However, on a good note, Charity Adams was promoted to lieutenant colonel upon her return to the U.S. The accomplishments of the 6 triple eight encouraged the general board united states forces european theater to adopt the following premise in their study of the women's army corps issued in december 1945 the national security program is the joint responsibility of all americans irrespective of color or sex and the continued use of colored along with white female military personnel is required in such strength as is proportionately appropriate to the relative population distribution between colored and white races with the exception of smaller units of African-American nurses who served in Africa, Australia, and England, the 6 triple eight Central Postal Directory Battalion was the only African-American women's unit to serve overseas during World War II. And that is the amazing history and success of the all-black, all-female 6 triple eight Central Postal Directory Battalion. Please support this channel by subscribing, liking videos and sharing. Also, in the comments section below, give me some ideas for any other unsung or little known moments in black history. Thank you for your time. We are amazing black history and we approve this message.